Hey everybody, welcome. And today we are going to drink a tea from Taiwan, a tea that we are offering on Taiwan sourcing, a Baozhong from winter 2017. It's the Pingling Organic Emperor Jade of Baozhong Oolong, winter 2017. Um, I'm just gonna read this here um, because it would be too long for me to memorize. And it's just a description from the site. But, you know, as we drink the tea, um, it's good to know a little bit of background about it. Um, this is written by Simon and, and then, um, you know, uh, edited by me. So anyways, Baozhong is one of the oldest types of tea in Taiwan. And the reason for it being named Baozhong is interesting. Some say it is called Baozhong because of a typo from Sizhong which is a special varietal that's different from the traditional varietal that's from uh, Wu Yi. And the people miswrote the two words. Uh, yeah, so Sijong is also a varietal that's, um, this is not in the description, is also a, a varietal from Anxi um, area of uh, Fujian. So I may have been confused with um, Sijong. Another more convincing and well-known Japanese document recorded that the name Baozhong was derived from the way in which tea merchants at that time packed their tea products with folding paper. Because Baozhong in Han, in, in Han characters or Chinese characters means literally the type of tea that was packed. Furthermore, this is again one of the most crucial points for Baozhong being classified as Baozhong in the 19th century is that it was a scented oolong tea with flowers such as osmanthus. Eventually, the old Baldrum evolved into the modern Baldrum, Baldrum we are more familiar with today after the innovative process invented by tea masters in the, 19, in the 1910s. This new process, which gave birth to the new type of Baldrum, no longer required it to be scented with flour to carry a floral aroma, relying instead on processing to bring out its natural essence. Despite some similarities, the 21st century Baldrum and 20th century Baldrum are two totally different types, tea types nowadays, which is due in part to the rising popularity of High Mountain Oolong, which influenced Baldrum processing to favor a more green tea-like aroma uh, in the finished tea. This new Baldrum we are offering from 2017 winter is the Baldrum that follows the tradition of proper processing by using a new but rare vari uh, Yu varietal under the supervision of Taiwan sourcing, Simon. As a result, this Baozhong will likely be the best Baozhong you've ever tried before and will age very well under the right conditions. This is a top-notch Baozhong and as such, we are calling it Emperor Jade, a name that could both show its varietal and unique, unique character. And again, Emperor Jade is um, uh, named after Cui Yu, the Cui Yu varietal, um, which literally means Emperor Jade or uh, green jade. Um, so anyways, let's get started. Um, th and this is grown in the Pingling area, not high altitude, um, by around 400 meters. So this is not a high altitude tea, but, um, it has, um, uh, well, we'll get to it, but it has a very green character. The leaf is very green. Um, it looks more like a green tea. It's not bald or tightly rolled, as is typical of Baozhong. Um, can, maybe you can see it here. It's not a tightly rolled tea at all. Um, it looks kind of like a, a green tea, actually. However, it is an oolong. The processing is more similar to that of an oolong. And the taste as well, it just doesn't have that green tea astringency, but anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves as we haven't tasted the tea quite yet. I'm going to get the water just hot enough here. And uh, we'll get started. Let's smell the dry leaf. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you smell the dry leaf and it just smells like oolong. You can smell the cream and just this kind of nice fruity creaminess just in the dry leaf, even without having heated the gaiwan at all. Um, this is a tea that could take hotter water um, and maybe you would get some slight astringency if you did, but 
Um, but I, I like to brew it maybe just uh, not too hot. Of course, if your water's hot and you just want to jump into it like we are, you can, um, this is what I like to do sometimes. I get the leaf to one side and I pour on the side of the gaiwan and I let it push the leaf up as opposed to pouring the tea directly. I can see the leaf is getting displaced and pushed up by the water. And this, and then of course I'm going to push it down into the water a little bit because I'm, I'm going to give it a little bit of a wash here. But by doing that, you can really, and then of course a really short steeping time, you can really mediate, um, you know, the, the temperature of the water by doing that, both shortening the steeping time and not pouring directly onto the, the leaf. So I've actually set up the leaf here for the next steeping where I can just pour the water in on the side right there. And I find that that helps. But the aroma here, oh, the aroma is just insanely good. It's just um, fruity and, and creamy. Um, it reminds me of like something almost food-like, but yet more pleasant. It's almost, it's, it's got more of an, an ethereal character than any kind of, you know, food smells. So let's get to it. Do a little wash on these cups here and then drink the, do a little half steeping here. Get the cameraman on the next one. But let's. Hmm. Not much on this one because of the way that I did it. Um, real short steeping time. Because this is, I really want to set it up to be this steep, um, to really be the one that's going to start us off. Very green. It's a real dark green um, color. Well, not super dark but it's quite dark. I mean, compared to green tea, as soon as you brew this tea, you smell the tea, you look at the tea, you taste the tea, and, and you realize that it's not green tea. And part of it is like what Simon talked about, the processing that we've done on this tea is really about getting the Tsuyu varietal to come out and, and kind of, um, what's the right word? Take, yeah, just taking advantage really of what the Tsuyu varietal has by processing it in a way that brings out the fruitiness and the creaminess. So let's see how the steep comes out. Oh. And this is where you get that almost, um, almost Higuain like, um, and if you've ever had a, a, a nice, super fresh, very green Anxi Sijong, um, or some of those other ones as well. Um, and again, I don't know how similar to um, Sijom Teguayin and, um, and the uh, Tsuyu varietal are, but there is definitely some similarity. It's very rare to get such a green um, tea from such a jade, um, strong jade oolong like this, with this kind of character. If it was a super high mountain one, like uh, Dayulin or, uh, or, or Li Shan. Um, first of all, I don't think Tsuyu is a very popular high mountain um, varietal to be used, typically Qingxin. Mm. It's almost like drinking, <laughs> it's almost like drinking a tea that has just like the and like a little bit of butter or something added. Of course, not like a salted butter, but um, like a sweet. It's almost as if you could make um, butter from from fruit or something like that. You know, that oily, creamy, um, viscous, uh, fruity um, kind of thing going on here. Last, can't even, unfortunately, can't even remember the name, but in the summer we had, the summer 2017, we had a bug bitten um, Baozhong 
summer 2017 that is insanely good it's not as um it's not as um green as this one it's got a little bit more of a darker profile um i don't want to say like black tea um just more of like a, a roast to do along um although it that oxidation was achieved through um you know the the bug bitten and that one is excellent as well i highly recommend it Mm. Wow. More full, more floral. Not a lot of flower. It's more of like a fruity a fruitiness to it. But that real nice, strong, thick mouth feel. And that oiliness. When I say oily, I should say creamy because creamy is the right word. Oily doesn't sound good. Oily sounds like you've got a, you know... some, you know, canola oil in your mouth. It's definitely not, it's, it's creamy. Mmm. Oh, so good. Dump that little stuff there. But spring teas um, are gonna be coming out fairly soon on Taiwan Sourcing. And again, um, Simon and I have been working with people to source some amazing teas. We're, um, we're gonna be offering more organic teas. We're gonna be offering more incredibly unique teas. Um, and so far the weather has really cooperated in Taiwan as well. So that's, that's really, that's, that's good because I do remember, was it spring 2016? Was it spring 2016? The weather was not um, particularly good for the high mountain oolongs. So it was too cold, I believe. And um, and so there were some, some problems there. And we carried less high mountain oolongs um, from that, that year, that year and, and harvest. Um, but I don't think we're going to have that problem this year. And in, and in Yunnan as well, the spring is, is um, was, uh, you know, generally... The weather was generally excellent, so. All right. So tea soup is still really nice, nice and green, a little bit yellow, um, but we're definitely not. And it's normal in this kind of, t this tea to get, um, my sample here is a little bit broken up because it's the end of the bag, but you are going to get um, a little bit of stuff. It kind of looks like real fine fibers um, or the hairs from the leaf that you're going to see in there. It's not a hyper, um, a hyper clear, transparent style tea liquor, um, but it's not supposed to be either. That's, that's the viscous. And that's why you've got a lot of that flavor as well, because it's really just, it's just this, you know, it's a, it's a soup. It's what it is. You're, you know, you're brewing this leaf and you've got a soup and, 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 um, the other thing about Baudrum that's really interesting, um, and really different from, um, a lot of the high mountain oolongs, which tend to carry pretty much all carry the stem. Um, the Baudrum does not carry the stem at all. Um, in fact, there's no stems in here at all. This is entirely just um, leaf and bud. Mm. Mm, magnificent. Just, again, really straightforward tea, um, but definitely not lacking in complexity. And it's very even. All the brews that I've done so far have just been basically, except for the wash, have been pretty similar. This one in particular, I don't know if you can see now, but now there's the leaves are open and there's just no space left in the gaiwan, really. I can't push them over. So we're definitely hitting a nice, um, and I've used seven grams. Um, this is about 100 and, 130, 140 um, milliliter gaiwan here. 
which is not available for sale. It used to be many, many years ago, but they are no longer available. I wish because they're really, it's a really pretty guy one, but there were some, some customers who uh, were lucky enough to purchase this guy one when it was available. So, ah, this is a tea that I would really just recommend to people. If you're wanting to enjoy and just relax and have something just not overpowering, like the chachi is not like, it's not, it doesn't like slam bam, hit you hard kind of thing. It's very pleasant. It's very, um, I would say kind of like almost a nurturing kind of tea. If you had a bad day or you're trying to recover and you just want something nice to just, just really just make you feel like, oh, well, life is good, you know? Uh, maybe even if the sun isn't shining, um, this tea will give you, give you that kind of feeling, I think, because it's very comforting and it's very like fortifying um, kind of kind of feeling that you get from the tea and just the senses as well. So, and even right now, I'm just, you know, this is very aromatic. It's a very aromatic tea. Um, the aromatics aren't sharp, but they're present. They're just, it's very thick and present, you know, that's the smell of this tea as well. So, um, I do, I do think that it's, um, and you know, and those of you who have had Baudrum, um, I think this tea definitely will be one of the better Baudrums that you've had. Um, maybe not the best, but it's, um, I think among the best that I've ever had. I, I like the, um, I also liked, uh, like I said, the bug bitten baudrum, which is a little bit different, a little more fruit and a little less of that kind of um, almost just a green style, um, kind of like a real green teguanyin. I don't know how else to describe it. It has that, it has a lot of that character. In fact, if you didn't, if I knew nothing about this tea and I knew nothing about baudrum, I would... I would probably guess that this was a Taiwanese varietal processed in Taiwan, um, but it is what it is. It's entirely unique, and I think that's um, you know the the culture of the culture and the history of Baudrillon is, is is just you know there's really nothing like it in the world. So um, we're really you know I think we're really lucky to be able to have you know such a developed you know, style of tea, you know, it's one thing to have tea, but it's another thing to have tea that has a history and has gone through various, you know, different stages in its history as well, like this tea. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, over time as we're able to, we will continue to talk about Baudrillon and we'll continue to talk about the history of the teas. Um, cause I think that's, that's really that's really adds a lot of, you know, you know, to the experience, to be able to, to understand, um, the history, obviously, you know, as with, as with anything. Hmm. A little bit more. I don't know if I brewed it stronger this time, but I got the slightest bit of astringency here. And maybe the, it's creeping into the tea a little bit as we brew it out um, due to the size of the leaf. Um, and again, this was a slightly, um, this remaining portion that I had was slightly, um, you know, a little bit of a uh, broken leaf. This is a tea that I would say medium level of, of, of um, infusibility um, and that it could be steeped, I want to say, Five, five to eight times, kind of depending on how you do it. Everybody's gong fu style is different, but it's not like a, you know, it's obviously not like some of the other real high mountain bald oolongs that'll go. And I think part of that is, is this doesn't have the stem. I think the stem for the high mountain oolongs adds, you know, fortifies the character of that tea and, 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 and carries it a lot, especially in the later steepings. Um, and as this is a pure, just as a, a leaf bud tea, um, is not going to be as infusible. However, 
it it does uh, it definitely makes an impression definitely um you know draws you into it and gives you you know all you know what it has what it has to offer for sure and it's it's not disappointing We'll get around to drinking it before the video is over, but I'm gonna let it sit here. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, definitely check out Taiwan Sourcing. Check out Baozhong, and we spell that B-A-O-Z-H-O-N-G, no space. Um, we've got a few Baozhongs on there. They do sell out pretty fast. Um, those who are in the know about Taiwan Sourcing um, and Baldrum, um tend to tend to be excited about them, um, but this is again this is the uh, Pingling Organic Emperor Jade um, Baldrum tea in its winter 2017. Check us out TaiwanOolongs.com, and also check out of course YunnanSourcing.com and YunnanSourcing.us. And thanks for watching. If you get a chance, subscribe so you can get notifications about all our new videos. Thanks.